All right. Going to be checking out uh, Badlands. This band. What's awesome? They only had a, ended up with two albums. All right. And uh, here's a little bit of a little bit of a history of them. After guitarist Jakey e. Lee was fired from Ozzy Osbourne's band by Ozzy's wife, manager Sharon, he got to work looking for a front man to form a band with. The vocalist he initially settled on was Ray Gillian who recently came off a stint with Ozzy's old bandmates, Black Sabbath. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little irony there. Together with bassist Greg Chasson and ex-Sabbath drummer Eric Singer, the newly formed Badlands quickly made a name for themselves with their roof-raising live shows and stripped-back approach to hard rock. They were. Janky Lee's guitars were just dropped down a little more old school, bluesy rock. Uh, I mean, he did an amazing job with Ozzy. Don't misunderstand. I mean, I loved the album he did with Ozzy. I believe it was Bark at the Moon. Anyway, their time as a glam rock's hottest new talents didn't last too long. And I never thought that they were glam at all. I don't even know why this is in this article. And within just two albums inside, tensions between the bands had torn the group apart. In 1993, Gilliam passed away, effectively putting an end to fans' hopes of a reunion. But while their career might have been short-lived, it was great while it lasted. It, it really was. It really was great while it lasted. And here's a little bit of background on Gillian and his illness and his death. In 1993, Whitfield F. Remsenberg was planning a, a remake of his first Metal Hammer Lorry Festival. But this time, specifically to stage Phenomenon's first ever live performance with Gillian on vocals. It was going to be the launch event for a series of concerts across Europe in 1994. Gillian called from New York and told Remsenberger in Munich that he had to bow out because he was too ill to perform. A damn shame. Gillian died of AIDS-related disease in New York Hospital on December 1st, 1993. He first showed symptoms of the disease around 1990, and according to his Badlands bandmate, Jakey e. Lee, in between the first and the second record, he started getting really thin and didn't look quite as healthy. Lee also claimed that he had not been aware of Gillian's diagnosis with AIDS until a meeting with their bandmate's manager, Paul O'Neill, who threatened to tell Atlanta Records, what a scumbag, about Gillian's illness if he was not fired from the band. God, what a jerk. Man. Gillian reports reportedly denied it saying to saying to Lee well it's not true so fuck him fire him Lee concluded so we did fire him and he did tell Atlanta Records that and we got and then Jakey e. Lee is saying that uh, they got kind of screwed on the second record because of it they wouldn't even give us tour support money at all but yeah Paul O'Neill Fucked them over. And Gillian was survived by a daughter, Ashley. She was born J July 1984. He is buried at Fairfield Cemetery in Fairfield, New Jersey. He was ranked at 100 on Top Parade's Top 100 Metal Vocals. The guy, I really liked his vocals. I just thought, I really, dug, it's just a shame. It's just a shame. All right, this one's going to be live wire, and yeah, I got to pause it. It's annoying. Wish we could just let it blast right through. But uh, this is live wire. Now this is uh, their official um, video, right? This is their official video. Here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
man. That riff is awesome. Let's hear that again. Let's hear that again. Man, I always liked Jakey e. Lee. I didn't think he never got enough love. I like him. Here we go. Damn. Just damn. That was so good. That's just sweet. Wow. Right out of the gate. This guy's vocals. Incredible. Blame. Don't you just miss it? Don't you just miss the energy of the 80s? I love how they're throwing in pics of them just rehearsing and just goofing around. Here we go. Some sweet. Tasteful licks from Jakey e. Lee himself. Here we go. My God, he was so young. Just, I just love his bluesy leads in this. I mean, it is a different departure from the the riffs he was doing in Ozzy on Bark of the Moon. But damn, you can't deny it's it's nice. Nice. You know, a lot of people were comparing him to um, not uh, Robert Plant, like him, Robert Plant, David Coverdale. They were all like, but I, I think this guy just stands out alone on his own with his own vocals. You turn me child. You know, I wished I could have got to see them in concert. I never got to see them. When I found my love, 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 I want you. This is awesome. I just love this break. Oh, 
let's hear that again. Like right there. <laughs> Love it. Oh my god. Look at this guy. See if I can get a good picture of Ian. It's just a damn shame. Every one of them are the guitar player and bass player. Where is he at? Come on. There you go. Look at him. Good looking guy. Great vocals. Now. We can speculate on how he got that got them AIDS. I don't know. He's probably doing drugs. Because I don't think he was gay. I don't think so at all. But it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that. That's a great song. How I... How? 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 Wire? There you go. There you go.